Hi, I'm Sam Hawley, coming to you from Gadigal Land. This is ABC News Daily. Once again, the treatment of women in politics has come into question after the independent senator, Lydia Thorpe, used parliamentary privilege to allege she'd been sexually assaulted in a stairwell at Parliament House. Today, political reporter Dana Morse on Lydia Thorpe's allegations and the culture at Parliament House. Dana, we're going to have a look and unpack these claims made in the parliament by the independent senator, Lydia Thorpe, because they're really explosive. They were made because across two days. This person... Senator Thorpe, I, I would just warn you at this me, point... at this point, sexually this, assaulted that, that, me. Senator, Senator Thorpe... So let's start on Wednesday evening when the senator first raised these allegations against Victorian Senator David Van. Senator and to Thorpe. have him talking about this today is an absolute disgrace. I have to, uh, Senator Thorpe, I have to call you to The allegations that he, of course, denies. It is just a lie and I reject it. Sorry, I just Senator can't. Van. Sorry, I re- withdraw the word lie. It's just not true. She made these under parliamentary privilege. Just remind me what that is. Yeah, so the term parliamentary privilege refers to the special legal rights and immunities that apply to both houses of parliament and the committees and the members. So it basically means that people can't be sued or prosecuted for anything they say under parliamentary privilege, which applies in the chambers. Mm -hmm. And the purpose is so that there can be a full and open discussion of all things on the floor. Yeah, right. So it means basically that MPs and senators, they're protected from legal action when they speak in the parliament. Exactly. Okay, so let's look now, Dana, at what led to Lydia Thorpe making these rather explosive comments in the Senate and then withdrawing them. What was happening at the time? It relates, we know, to this continuing debate about Brittany Higgins. That's right. So the Parliamentary Week uh, has been dominated by a rather intense debate about the handling of the Brittany Higgins sexual assault allegations. Part of the debate in the Senate, uh, the Victorian Liberal Senator David Van stood up. Senator Van. Thank you, Deputy President. And, and, and uh, criticised the Labor Party for the way it had handled the matter. The behaviour that we saw from the Labor Party coming from these benches in the last year or so was disgraceful. You know, the the muck that's being thrown from that side to this side. He was saying at the time before Senator Thorpe uh, made her interjection, as parliamentarians, we need to be focused on setting the standard. For all Australians and in all aspects of life. And he was talking about the muck that was being thrown from both sides of politics. Those opposite continue to attack Senator Reynolds and throw mud across the chamber while claiming indemnity and innocence. Senator Thorpe, please, please, Senator Thorpe. Senator Thorpe, Senator Thorpe, Right, and this is the moment when Lydia Thorpe Thorpe interjected. Yeah, so she stood up and made pretty serious allegations against Senator David Van. This person... Senator Thorpe, I I would just warn you at this point... Harassed me, sexually assaulted me... And then the Senate Deputy President, who was presiding at the time, Andrew McLaughlin, was repeatedly trying to get Senator Thorpe Thorpe, to sit back down. Senator Thorpe, I've called you to order. Please be at order. He was asking Senator Thorpe to withdraw the accusation... Feeling really uncomfortable when a perpetrator is speaking about violence. Senator Thorpe, Senator violence. Thorpe that is inappro- that's inappropriate and reflected pulling the member, and I have to ask you to withdraw that. I can't. She did later in the evening on Wednesday, but she was telling the Senate that she was doing that, withdrawing the allegation due to Senate standing Senator. orders. In order to comply with the parliamentary standing orders, I withdraw those remarks. For the information of the Senate, I will make a further statement on the matter tomorrow. Okay, so Dana, let's 
talk about what she then said on Thursday in the Senate in a moment. But Senator Van, he denied these allegations, didn't he, in the strongest possible terms? Yes, so he utterly rejected the statement in the moment. He described it as disgusting. I utterly reject that statement, that disgusting statement, outright. It is just a lie, and I reject it. Sorry, I just Senator can't. Van. Sorry. In a I statement really he then that. issued later, he said Lydia Thorpe had made unfounded and completely untrue allegations against him and that he unequivocally denies and continues to deny them. He also said that he'd sought legal advice and the Deputy Senate President, Andrew McLaughlin, said he would be referring Senator Thorpe's comments to the Senate President, Sue Lyons. OK, so Dana, let's fast forward to Thursday and Lydia Thorpe was on her feet again and she repeated the accusations in the Senate under parliamentary privilege and she gave more detail, but this time she didn't name anyone. What did she say? Yeah, so it was a, a tearful statement in the Senate by uh, Senator Thorpe. So today I will speak about my experience in Parliament. When I started... I was a new senator. As all women that have walked the corridors of this building know, it is not a safe place. She made a point of saying that people have different ways of defining sexual assault, but she told the Senate she believes that she was sexually assaulted in a stairwell at Parliament House where there were no CCTV cameras and that she was cornered. To me, it was sexual assault. And the government at the time recognised it as such. This time she didn't name anybody, but she said a man had followed her and aggressively propositioned her and inappropriately touched her. She said in the Senate that she felt so unsafe at Parliament House afterwards that she used to always make sure that she had someone with her when she was walking in the corridors. I was afraid to walk out of the office door. I would open the door slightly and check the coast was clear before stepping out. It was to the degree that I had to be accompanied by someone whenever I walked inside this building. That is how the Greens supported me and I thank them for that. She gave a pretty vivid description of the way that Parliament House is laid out, that there are often long dark corridors with no windows and no people in them. She said that at the time she raised it with the Senate President and others and she thought that the Liberal Party was taking her accusations seriously, especially after they moved uh, David Van's office, which had been right next to hers. She told the Parliament she wouldn't be taking the matter to police, but she will continue to speak Can out about abuse positions. and harassment. I will not pursue legal action. I want to focus on making this place safe for everyone. And at this moment, it is not a safe place for women. Mm, OK, so serious allegations. What's been the response then to this? Well, very quickly, Peter Dutton moved to remove Senator Van from the Liberal Party. And a short time ago, I advised Senator Van. Uh, of my decision that he should no longer sit in the Liberal Party party room. He said that further allegations had come forward overnight regarding Senator Van's conduct. Peter Dutton said that didn't mean that he was making any judgment on an individual's guilt or otherwise. At the outset, I want to make clear, uh, very clear, that I'm not making any judgment on the veracity of allegations or any individual. Uh, he's referred uh, the matter to the Parliamentary right, Workplace so. Support Services as well. And what about Senator Van? What's he said about this now? So he's confirmed that his office was moved after Senator Thorpe made a complaint in 2021 that his behaviour was making her uncomfortable. He told the Senate the move was because right, Senator, Senator Thorpe was behaving irrationally. There should be and must be an investigation into these outrageous claims so they can be proved to be false. He says if allegations are made, they should be made to the police. Mm, OK, so as we've said, this is just so incredibly messy by now and the public's watching on. And it goes, Dana, doesn't it, to this issue of parliamentary culture again. It's really not a good look, I wouldn't have thought, in the public eye. 
Yeah, and this comes at a time where the former Sex Discrimination Commissioner, Kate Jenkins, had said that she was really confident that the parliamentary culture had changed for the better. How much do you think the culture in, in Parliament and our politics has actually changed? Uh, I'm really confident that our parliament has changed. They've put in place but a holiday. But certainly uh, that's not what we're seeing play out in the halls right now. And it certainly says something that a lot of the uh, victim survivor support services that have been spoken to about these stories have expressed that they've been very disappointed by the way that these allegations have been handled in the media. It's certainly brought to light an ugly side of politics and it doesn't feel like this story is going anywhere anytime soon. I will not go to the police. This is my choice. But I will continue to speak out against the abuse and harassment that happens in this building. That is my choice. Dana Morse is a political reporter based at Parliament House in Canberra. If this episode's raised any issues for you, you can call 1800 RESPECT. This episode was produced by Veronica App App, Anna John, and Sam Dunn, who also did the mix. Our supervising producer is Stephen Smiley. If you're looking for something else to listen to this weekend, the ABC has a new podcast out this month called Quick Smart. Each episode, host Tegan Taylor unpacks a big idea in under 10 minutes. There are a couple of episodes already available on the Listen app. Here's a trailer to give you a sense of the show. I'm Sam Hawley. ABC News Daily will be back again on Monday. Thanks for listening. Okay, so we've all been there, sitting with our friends at dinner when some smart conversation starts about something that you maybe, probably should definitely know about, but you don't because you can't possibly read everything. It happens to me literally all the time. Hey, so I was reading that IPCC report. It is appalling. Hey, Tegan, what did you make of it? Um, yeah, the last report was, uh, yeah, it was, um, I'm sorry. <laughs> Can you catch me up on that? Which is why 